From literal ice castles in upstate New York that trapped the homeowners inside, and a wild water spout in Amsterdam that caught these siblings by surprise, to an elephant in Japan that could give Picasso a run for his money, and a helicopter pilot who ruined National Children's Day in Thailand. Here are nine moments you wouldn't believe if not filmed. Now, some people view Amsterdam as the Las Vegas of Europe. They think it's the one place where everything is legal and there are no consequences, even though that's not true. In fact, the city recently ran an ad campaign discouraging European tourists from going nuts. They should have just run this clip on repeat. It was August 10th of 2019. A man and his little brother were sailing through one of Amsterdam's many canals when a tornado touched down in the distance. They watched in amazement as the storm moved over the water. Unfortunately, it was heading right for them. Thankfully, the tornado turned water spout wasn't strong enough to cause any major damage. Still, these brothers didn't feel like sticking around to find out. They kicked their boat into high gear and sailed up the canal. This storm was actually the second cyclone to touch down in Europe that day. Another twister was spotted roughly 225 miles away in Luxembourg. Tornadoes are a rare sight in Europe, even rarer in the north and northwest. If these two didn't catch this one on camera, nobody would have believed them. There are plenty of amazing animals at the Okinawa Zoo and Museum in Japan. You can watch the hippos wade in the water, giraffes eat from tall branches, and cute little goats nibble on straw. But none of them come close to Okinawa's best attraction, Yumeka the Painting Elephant. Technically, Yumeka lives at Elephant Kingdom in the Chiba Prefecture, but in March of 2018, she arrived at the Okinawa Zoo to give birth. While waiting for the baby, Yumeka thought she'd put on an art show for everyone to see. We're not kidding when we say this elephant can actually paint. There's no denying that Yumeka just painted a Japanese cherry blossom tree. As they say, an elephant never forgets. Yumeka clearly has cherry blossom trees tattooed on her mind. But how on earth is she able to paint real pictures? Yumeka began painting when she was two. Her trainer, who's been with her all her life, taught her how to draw basic lines with a cross-shaped brush that she can hold in her trunk. They think Yumeka remembers the different shapes and commits them to muscle memory. She can draw everything from cherry blossoms to Japanese characters and sunflowers. Proceeds from her paintings help fund the park, too. In 2016, her paintings brought in 29 million yen, or nearly $200,000, when combined with donations and ticket sales. The Spartan Race is a series of obstacle course races with varying degrees of difficulty. Some races are only three miles long, while others span 50 kilometers and last multiple days. You can find one wherever there's steep and rough terrain, like Big Bear Lake, California. Big Bear Spartans were nearing the finish line on May 18th of 2022. It had already been a grueling race, but it was about to get even more intense. Without warning, a dust devil touched down near the metal tents and photo backdrops. And while these storms are normally harmless, this devil channeled the will of a Spartan.
just happened? Oh my god. I hope people are okay. This is like no joke. Notice when the announcer said, everybody please move away, everybody immediately moved toward the dust devil. Then again, what did he expect? These people put their bodies on the line to complete the Spartan race. The little dust devil wasn't about to send them packing. Thankfully, none of the Spartans or volunteers were hurt when the dust storm passed through. Racers finished the event and got their picture taken among the rubble. We can't imagine they were too upset. The destruction probably added to the overall aesthetic. Santa Catarina is a small state in southern Brazil. It's one of the country's oldest states, having separated from Sao Paulo in 1738. As you can imagine, they've seen some pretty wild storms in their time. This windstorm from October of 2016 was one for the record books. A couple huddled inside as whipping winds battered the parking garage above their cars. Apparently, the wind was strong enough to pull the cement anchors from the ground. It was only a matter of time before the inevitable happened. Sai daí, amor. It looks like the last gust caused the entire parking structure to collapse. Hopefully, the damage to their cars wasn't too bad. It's unclear if this was an isolated incident or part of a broader storm system. Either way, it was a valuable lesson learned. Maybe they'll dig those anchors a little deeper next time. Although it's not a public holiday, the second Saturday in January is recognized as National Children's Day in Thailand. Every year, the Prime Minister of Thailand gives the day a special motto. The 2023 motto was understanding responsibility, achieving discipline, and aspiring to good deeds. And while that message resonated with the children, it didn't hit home with this helicopter pilot who decided to fly over the festivities in Chantaburi province. What was supposed to be a fun stunt devolved into chaos as the helicopter flew too close to the marquee tents. As the story goes, the Thai Air Force helicopter was supposed to drop candy and flower petals onto everyone below. Looking closely, you can see them falling from the chopper like tiny raindrops. But they clearly didn't think this plan all the way through. The downwash caused several of the flimsy tents to collapse. According to the police, eight people sustained injuries. Thankfully, local officials agreed to pay for everyone's medical bills. It's unclear who signed off on the stunt. Next time, they'll probably think twice before flying a military-grade helicopter over a children's festival. Hamburg, New York is a tiny little town south of Buffalo. It's home to about 60,000 people who are used to freezing winds blowing off of Lake Erie in the winter. For some, it's a wonderland. 
For others, especially those in the Hoover Beach neighborhood, it's a winter nightmare. It was late February of 2020. A few weeks before the pandemic locked everyone inside, a wild snowstorm blew over the Lake Erie region. Gale force wind sent massive waves crashing onto the shore. The frigid conditions caused it to freeze over the houses. It might look fake, but we swear, what you're seeing is 100% real. According to the Weather Channel, 40 mile per hour winds blew for about 48 hours straight. Because it was so cold, we're talking low to mid 20s, spray hit the buildings and froze instantly. Repeat that process for 48 hours, and you're looking at layers of ice as much as 12 feet deep. But why don't we see this every winter? Lake Erie is usually covered in ice around this time of year. However, when this storm struck, the lake didn't have any ice cover on its eastern end. That allowed water to crash over the shoreline and drench the houses. As the ice began melting, residents were worried about structural damage to their homes. 12 feet of ice is pretty heavy when you think about it. As far as we can tell, everyone's home emerged from its ice cocoon unscathed. Revelstoke, British Columbia is a small city in southwestern Canada. In the 1910s, Norwegian immigrants introduced the city to skiing and ski jumping. Today, it feels like every little neighborhood has its own ski club. While most people stick to the resorts, the real thrill seekers take helicopters into the backcountry. On March 26th of 2015, Zach Birney and his roommate caught a ride up one of the snow-covered mountains. They were only a few seconds into their run when tragedy struck. You can hear the adrenaline pouring out of Zach. By some miracle, he managed to stay on top of the avalanche. It looks like he's buried from the waist down. And while that's not ideal, it sure beats getting completely buried. Luckily, Zach is an experienced backcountry skier. You have to be to survive these kinds of situations. He walked away without a scratch, though his shoulder was a little sore afterward. Despite everything, Zach called it a good day on the mountain. This near tragedy didn't scare him away from his favorite winter sport either. The Barguzin is a 300-mile river flowing through eastern Siberia. It's a popular spot for Russian hunters looking to bag big game animals. We're talking wolves, bears, wild boar, and massive deer. But on November 17th of 2018, these hunters were looking to save an animal instead. Alexei Baliuv was out hunting when he received a call about a drowning animal. There was a red deer trapped in a frozen section of the Barguzin. Alexei quickly gathered a team to save the freezing deer. Members included vets, volunteers, and workers from the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations. Armed with chainsaws and rope, they began cutting a path toward warm, dry land. It took some time and plenty of patience, but Alexei and the crew finally pulled the deer onto dry land. Getting it out of the water was no easy task. The Caspian red deer can grow to be 700 pounds. By the looks of it, this was one of the big boys. 
А что такое? Костер? А это спичек? А? Ну, конечно, ну, разминать его. Сколько можно. часов он просидел там? Мять, мять надо его. The deer was clinging to life. To try and warm its limbs, the men began massaging its legs and rubbing its belly. Eventually, they built a fire, which may have saved the deer's life. Пойдешь, так пойдешь, что? Во, 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 начал помалевать. Подтягивает его, а? Не жгет ему ничего, что ему обожгет, вы кого говорите ему? Пусть, пусть, пусть. Хорошо, пусть. Теплом отдает ноги. Вот, Серега, ты-то попал, ага, надо же мне. Такую Иди историю. Сюда, сюда, Иди туда, но там теплее ветер туда дует. На быстро проходи. О, подтягивать начал уже. Even those little movements were a big improvement. But this deer still needs help. Alexei's crew wrapped it in blankets and put the deer on a sled. Then they towed the buck back to their snowy Russian town and placed him inside a warm garage. Then they did the most Russian thing possible. They fed the deer lard and 150 grams of vodka to warm him up from the inside. As they say, trust the process. All their hard work paid off. The deer sat up that night and pranced back into the woods the next morning. Не, не, не тут не тяжелее. Это яд для них. Ему естественную позу надо. Seeing their new friend go was hard, but all the men felt a little warmer inside. They gathered for pictures, knowing they had saved a life instead of taking one. It was May 29th of 2023. Paulo Asta and his girlfriend were paddleboarding off the coast of Puerto Madryn, Argentina, when a few unexpected visitors dropped in. Three southern right whales began swimming around their tiny paddleboard. These massive animals can grow to be 56 feet long and weigh 176,000 pounds. And while this paddleboarding duo wasn't about to get eaten, you can tell there's a slight sense of panic behind Paolo's smile. When southern rights breach, they'll typically slap their tails on the water, kind of like this. <laughs> One of these whales even wanted to say hello to Paolo and his girlfriend. <laughs> Paolo admitted he had never seen anything like this in all his years on the water. He was excited, but admittedly scared at the same time. Had those whales gotten closer, they could have easily knocked them off their board. Thankfully, southern rights only eat cope pods and krill, not Argentinian paddleboarders. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.